Hello everybody and welcome to part 3 of the anime Pokemon tournament. As always, this series is, ha, was written by my friend Fabian, so all credit goes to him. That said, if you enjoyed the series and want to see more, be sure to leave a like and say something in the comments below. This series hasn't get, gotten that much love and I would li really like to encourage my friend to keep writing. Uh, let's say 3 likes in the, for the next part. If you have any requests or suggestions, be sure to drop them by my discord below, link in the description and leave them there. With all that said, let's get started. In the previous episode, our protagonist Midoriya Mark spent the time training, running to a bit of loudmouth on the way. Now the weather isn't the greatest it could be, it even looks like it's going to rain soon, but our two trainers aren't scared by that. Mark says, looks like the weather isn't on our side today, but that's not something that can hold us back, right Midoriya? Midoriya answers, are you sure? I think we should find some cover somewhere. Mark says, oh, would you quit your pessimistic pessimism for once? Jeez, if you only see the negative in life, you'll have no space for the good parts. See, rain might make us wet, but at the same time, plants get hydrated and the soil loses its dryness. You may not notice while you look at the obvious, but... Sometimes taking a closer look can change your point of view drastically. Midoriya answers, I didn't know you had a doctorate in philosophy. Mark breaks out in laughter and says, that's the spirit. At the same time, a bolt of lightning hits the tree next to them and both stare at the destroyed plant. Mark screams, oh heck, forget what I just said and run. They start running like they've never done before. Shortly after, they find a little mold in the rocks to hide from the storm. Midoriya says, I can't believe we almost got hit by a lightning bolt. I mean, what are the odds of that? Mark says, how am I supposed to know? Do I look like a mathematician to you? Well, the important thing is it didn't hit us and we're safe now. Someone says, yeah, I hope you're right. Mark and Midoriya are so surprised by the person that, they, that in fear they both fall to the ground. Mark shouts, Who do you think you are to scare us like that? The person replies, Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. It's just I didn't know how to properly introduce myself. My name is Ken Kaneki and I'm from Elevenia from Toki. Mark says, Doki, isn't that where those weird ghouls hang around? Midoriya interrupts, asking, what's a ghoul? Mark responds with a disgraceful tone, man-eaters. Kaneki replies, well, yes, they are less of a threat than you might think. Oh, and don't worry, I'm not a ghoul myself. Mark replies, nobody said you were, but I guess that's usually the first thing people ask you. Kaneki says, yes, unfortunately, that's why I'm traveling on my own. People dislike having me around, which has forced me into a pretty asocial status. Miro interrupts the two again and says, you can come with us if you want. You look like someone nice and it would be a shame leaving, uh, leaving out a chance for a new friend. Mark affirms, yes, he's absolutely right. Like this, we can train together and wait. Are you even a trainer? I'm sorry, I just assumed you were. Kaneki says, oh, don't worry, I'm a trainer. In fact, I'm on my way to the championship right now. And as for your offer, I would be pleased to join you, S such nice people. I bet you're one of the, on the way to cha the championship too, right? Midoriya says, well, one of us is. You see, Mark lost to me in a six, uh, lost to me, lost six badges in a badge fight. And now... I'm on my way to the next gym in Bizaria. Kaneki asks, Bizaria? I heard the gym leader there is quite the star in the professional league. It doesn't make sense though. The fact is that in between us and the capital, that gym is the closest one. I bet a star like him still be no big deal for you. Midoriya says, oh, you think? I hope you're right, because if not, all my efforts were for nothing. Mark adds sarcastically, It's not like you could repeat the fight or anything. And Midoriya shouts out loud, Couldn't you have told me that earlier? Mark says, You never asked. 
At first Midoriya was quite furious at him, but something else caught their attention. A blurry shadow approached the shelter they were hiding in. With menacing spikes, the beast growled a fierce roar in the tone of a war declaration. The three children cried in fear and ran away, screaming like little babies. Mark Puffing says, You should you sound like a Klefa, Kaneki. Whereas Midoriya counters, at least he doesn't sound like a giraffari. Kaneki p presses out, Could you two please stop this nonsense? We are in the middle of a storm, completely unprotected, and you are still mocking each other. We should probably find a solution to the problem at hand, or we are all going to be sick. Which means no gym battle. With that realization, the two companions agree to find a solution. Confidently, Midoriya says, we need to go back to the cave, otherwise we won't be in good sh enough shape to battle. Mark says, agreed, but there is that monster just waiting for us to come back and have itself a tasty meal. Kaneki contradicts, things like monsters don't exist, it must be a Pokemon of some sort, and judging by the size, it isn't the tallest. In the end, all of us are only searching for shelter. I'm sure it won't mind if we're nearby. The trainers go back into the cave where indeed they find the shadow laying in a corner. It is barely visible but you can tell that it is there. By its trembling, Midoriya approaches the creature very carefully. Mark shouts, watch out man! You don't know what it is! Midoriya replies, don't worry, I have done this a million times at the ranch. Indeed, his mother taught him from early on how, get, how you get a Pokemon's confidence. Finally, the youngsters lays eyes on the Pokemon. Midoriya stutters. G guys, we have a problem here. What? asks Mark. Is it dangerous? What Pokemon is it even? Midoriya says it's a Nidorino and it's heavily injured. At the exact moment, Nidorino realizes his presence and charges right away. Midoriya shouts, come back, we only want to help you. But it didn't listen, it just ran away. Midoriya says, we have to follow it. Mark asks, but why? We have the cave for ourselves now. Kaneki says, oh please, how selfish can you be to leave an injured Pokemon on its own? You are right, but Midoriya, we need to find it, and fast. It needs our help. Due to the steady darkness, and it took a while to find the injured Pokemon. When it makes eye contact with our young trainers, however, Nidorino starts running again. Midoriya rapidly calls out Rhydon for help. Midoriya shouts, okay Rhydon, we need to stop Nidorino, but try not to hit it. Use Stone Age. Edge. Massive rocks surge from the ground and trapping the fugitive. Kaneki says, well done. Now the only thing we need to do is, oh no. Nidorino disappeared leaving a hole in the ground. Mark says, of course it knows, dig. Midoriya says, for those wounds it still has a lot to offer. Come on guys, we, need to, we can't give up yet. Mark says, I have never seen you being this energetic before. Well then, let's get this little guy. After looking for a bit longer, Mark yells, There it is, I can see it right over there. Ain't that fast after all, huh? Arriving at the Pokemon's new location, this time it doesn't run away. Mark says, Alright, giving up. I thought you were a fighter. Midori interrupts him. Mark, are you being really, you're being really rude. Let me handle this on my own. Mark replies, fine, fine, do as you wish, but hurry it up, it's so damn cold. Midoriya calls out Bulbasaur and commands Bulbasaur to, to, commands Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur, can you hold him for a second? We don't want him to escape in these conditions, now do we? His partner swings his vines at Nidorino, which doesn't help calm him down. Midoriya calmly says, hey Nidorino, do you see this? He holds up a bottle for restore. Midoriya continues, it's gonna help you, but only if you let me put it on. He gets closer and closer to the little Pokemon saying, you don't, you, you see nothing to worry about. Everything's gonna be just fine. 
Midori applies the medicine, emptying the full restore. Kaneki applies a band-aid to stop the bleeding. But unfortunately, despite the treatment, it still doesn't move. Oh, did I forget to mention that our little companion was watching all the time? Nana approaches the group and sits down next to Midorino. Midori exclaims, what Pokemon is that? I've never seen such a thing, not even on TV. Kaneki adds, me, ni me neither. He pulls out his Pokedex, wanting to find out what Pokemon he is. Kaneki then continues, even my Pokedex doesn't have any information about it. The small fellow lays his tiny ha arms to the sealed wound. Kaneki says, no, don't touch it. It will only hurt even more. But instead of hurting, heard screaming, Nidorino releases a b b sigh of relief. Relieved moan. Midora realizes something. All the wounds are gone. You, you must have used a healing ability. Oh! When Midoriya finishes speaking, the savior has already left, vanishing before his eyes. Midora says, that was strange. Mark says, who cares? While you were doing your stuff, the storm finally stopped. Kaneki adds, well then, what are we waiting for? Let's head to Vazaria. As Midori stands up to go, Nidorino holds his, him back, pulling on his sleeve. He has a very desperate look in his eyes, and looking at Midoriya, Midori understands what it wants. Midori asks, are you sure about this? You know that you can't do whatever you want, or when you want to anymore, right? The Pokemon doesn't move a muscle. Midoriya smiles as, it pulls, as he pulls out a Pokeball, and throws it at the Pokemon while saying, okay then, go Pokemon, catch! Nidorino doesn't resist a bit, being caught immediately. Nidorino is now a part of Midoriya's party. But what will our heroes do now? And what are Midoriya's plans to beat the gym leader? That and more in the next episode is The Journey Continues, is what I would say. But due to the power of anime and the fact that these episodes aren't getting that many views, we jump a bit ahead. In the journey, our young trainers came across a haunted mansion, got spooked like hell by a Gengar, which after some shenanigans, decided to join Midoriya's party. After this, the trainers continue on their journey, reaching Bazaria. They go to the gym in order to face the leader. The gym leader exclaims, Good day, challenger. My name is Jotaru Kujo. But you can call me by my battle name, Jojo. I am this town's gym leader and specialize in fighting type Pokemon. The rules of this battle are simple. I use my Platinum Star Machoke while you can use all of your Pokemon. It's one Pokemon against a maximum of six in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Any objections? Midoriya determined to hit, shout no. Jojo replies, then if I, I may ask, how should I call you, Challenger? Midoriya responds, by the name that the whole world's gonna know me by, Deku. Jojo says, fine then, let's start. Judge, the judge monologues, the battle between Bazaria's gym leader Jojo and the Challenger Deku is about to start. Ready, set, battle! As the journey continues... Anyway, that's where I'm leaving now for today. As mentioned, the series will be getting shorter, shortened a bit, so we're going to try and fit more material into each episode. I do hope you enjoyed. Please leave your support by hitting that like button or leaving a comment. 30 likes next part. Please, I really want my f to support my friend. I'll ask this. What do you all think Midoriya's Pokemon have in common? Who knows? Well, I do. I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, until next episode, everyone, have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye!